As you know, I, I have the honor of presenting my briefing this morning to the Security Council about the situation in Libya. Uh, UNSMIL has made a lot of efforts under my leadership over the last 18 months. We have extensively uh, interacted with all Libyans. They welcomed me as a brother, and uh, we worked together from all sides in a very inclusive manner. However, we have, I ha we have seen that over the last months, particularly, the situation has deteriorated in Libya on account of two major factors. The first one is the lack of political will and good faith by the major Libyan actors who are comfortable with the current stalemates which have been going on in Libya since 2011. The second factor is the emerging international dynamic and regional dynamics. Libya is today a battleground. Uh, we have seen that there is an ongoing renewed scramble for Libya, for its territory used as military confrontations by different act act foreign actors. But also, Libyan armed group and other security forces used politically in the political in, in, in the conflicts in, inside the country. All the conflicts in the region today have an impact in Libya. Whether you talk about the crisis in, in Ukraine, whether you talk about the situation in Gaza, whether you talk about the disintegration of Sudan, and of course, the ongoing security situation in the Sahel. All these crises are interlinked and over the last weeks and months, Libya is more and more on the road almost to lose its sovereignty. The UN has made all the efforts. UNSMIL has attempted to advert this situation. We needed the support of all the international and regional players to achieve meaningful, meaningful results. Unfortunately, we have seen against the backdrop of this developing crisis, parallel tracks taken by different foreign actors which undermine the effort of the UN. So long as this exists, there is no room for a solution in, a, in the future. And I feel very sorry because in Libya, public opinion, in Libya, political parties, civil society organizations, women, tribal leaders are all impassioned to see an end to this crisis. They want to regain the sovereignty of their country. They have been promised democracy in 2011. No democracy is in the horizon. The economic situation is worsening because Libya is the prey to foreign economic 
interferences against a background of mismanagement by, by the current leaders who have no consideration for the interests of the people of Libya. In, in, in coordination with their foreign uh, counterparts, in conjunction with the foreign ba backers, the country is sliding more and more into chaos. And it is out of question to take the United Nations as a scapegoat for this. And uh, this is what I really explained to the Security Council today, so that the Security Council should take its responsibility because it is the Security Council which in 2011 decided to intervene in Libya. And up until now, instead of the situation improving, it is worsening. In spite of all the efforts, lack of coordination of the member states, Moreover, as I said, parallel tracks which divert the country from uh, the political solution which all the Libyan citizens aspire to. Thank you. So, uh, Amélie, uh, AFP. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Amélie Botelier from AFP News Agency. Can you confirm that you have submitted your resignation to the Secretary General, as said in the press, and explain why? Yes, I did tender my resignation to the Secretary General and uh, explained for these very reasons. And uh, of course, it's up to the Secretary General to draw the conclusions therefrom. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Basile, and I'm sure we will all miss you. Are you going to stay on for a little bit? But that's not my question. My question is, you've given a very dire report on the self-interest of all of the different parties in Libya. And you said that what happens with the international community trying to get together and actually pressure uh, some positive action toward elections is crucial. But you didn't name the international countries that you want to see actually to take action to join forces to make this happen. Would you tell us the countries that you would really like to see actually putting pressure to make some progress on Libya? Uh, there is no need to name countries. What is important is to note that we have seen in recent months the development of parallel initiatives which have the objective, even if it is not declared, to disrupt the UN-led process. The Security Council has given the mandate to UNSMIL to convene the Libyan file. Discussion negotiations should be led under the auspices of the United Nations. Unfortunately, those parallel tracks tend to divert, of course, and sometimes they are taken outside the UN process. The UN is not even informed about these decisions, and they run against what we have initiated. And therefore, it gives ample room to the Libyan leaders who are interested in keeping the status quo to continue to maneuver and to deploy their delaying tactics. Uh, thank you, Tsam Azim Al Arab Al Jadid newspaper. Uh, first, two follow ups. Uh, you, are you going to stay in your position, assuming that the Secretary General is going to accept the resignation? 
Are you going to stay in your position until there is a new uh, envoy? And then uh, the second question, I want to push back a little bit on the issue of uh, uh, foreign countries and other non-Libyan uh, what that my colleague Edith asked, you said you would don't want to name names, but as a matter of fact, these countries are playing a crucial role on uh, delivering more weapons in uh, involving these different parties. So, and you said you want the Security Council to to take more actions. So, which actions do you want to, to, to them to take if you are not even saying which countries are influencing these parties negatively? Thank you. My conviction is that so long as the Libyan crisis will be monopolized by the current leaders as instrument to find a solution will not go anywhere. The conf conflict will continue to linger on because they are interested in the status quo, which is uh, perfectly suiting their uh, group interests or, and individual interests. And of course, actions by their foreign backers is an incentive for them in that regard. So this is what uh, I can say so far. Are you staying in the position of the I have tendered my resignation. Talal, then Stefano, and then we'll let you Sir, Sir, Talal Hajj from Al-Arabiya Dal Hadath, you have drawn a very bleak picture for the country and for its future. Can you say anything that gives hope to the people of Libya since their leadership is not interested in their own interest of the Libyan people, but in their own interest? Uh, and the countries which you spoke to just now in the Security Council, uh, many of the countries that you blame for what's happening in, in Libya are sitting in in seats of power inside the, the chamber of the Security Council. What hope do you have of this Security Council taking decision to change the status quo? Uh, and I noticed that you did not announce your, uh, your resignation to the Council, neither in the open session, and I heard that you didn't announce it in the closed session either. Why is that? As I, it's very sad, but uh to, to note, as I said, in Libya today, the bulk of the Libyan population want to get out of this mess. They came to me and asked for a formula which will go beyond those leaders who do not want to put an end to the crisis of the country who want to prolong their sufferings. Unfortunately, as I said, those leaders are supported in their tactics by their foreign backers in many ways. And under the circumstances, there is no way the UN can operate successfully because they put the brake on the wheel of any, for any solution. This is what we are faced with today, unfortunately. And uh, uh, if the liberty, the freedom was granted to the Libyan citizens, they would be able, through the freedom of assembly, through peaceful uh, governings to find a solution because they have solutions, they have proposed solutions. However, under the pretext that only the, legit the so called legitimate institutions have a right to devise a way forward, those citizens, goodwill citizens, citizens of good faith, cannot have their voice heard in the political process. There is a lot of discourse formally about a Libyan, Libyan own solution. But in fact, what they call Libyan, Libyan solutions is a Libyan solution which suit those group of leaders who do not want to make things uh, move forward. It suits their backers. That's the reality. 
as the procedure is that I was appointed by the Secretary General and through the due process, I tendered my resignation to the Security Council, to the, to the Secretary General, and it's up to him with due respect to his uh, decision to wait for the way he will communicate this. Stefano and then we'll let you yes. Stefano Vaccaro, which is in New York, uh, Press. Uh, Mr. Batili, you, uh, in the past, in the Security Council, you say so many times that uh, foreign powers should be out of uh, influencing the process in, uh, in uh, Libya. Now, you don't want to say, you don't want to name anyone, so we have to assume that there are m many, many countries, and maybe you don't want too many enemies. At this point, I have a question. You are not the first one, probably not the last one, to resign this post this position. Do you have any advice for the next one? Uh, what you should not do that you did and then you end up to resign if, if for this mission, for this impossible mission? What I, as far as I'm concerned, I have done my best. Uh, throughout my tenure of 18 months, I have visited extensively Libya. I went to all regions of Libya, east, west, south. I met with all stakeholders, citizens of all conditions, all community groups, Arabs, Amazigh, Tuareg, Tebu, the social formations of the South, different tribal groups, all the major cities which have been destroyed by, by these walls. I listened carefully to everybody. And I took along their proposals. This is what I could do. I cannot impose a solution the Security Council is the moral authority to look at the mandate, given the situation, how to move forward the, 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 the situation. Of course, uh, I think in my, conv my conviction is that as long, so long as we count on the so-called Libyan leaders, we cannot find a solution because their legit legitimacy is in question. The House of Representatives has been elected in 2014. It's 10 years now. They claim legitimacy when their terms of office has expired. The High Council of State was elected in 2012. We are in 2024. This parliament has been not, not been renewed. We are faced with interim arrangements through leaders whose legitim legitimacy, legit legitimacy can be challenged and is really challenged by the Libyan people by the Libyan citizen, this is very clear. Therefore, they should allow the citizens to go to elections to select their leaders through a mechanism of electoral system which is transparent. And in that regard, during my tenure, tenure because of the pressure we have put on them, we arrived at new electoral laws by the 6 plus 6, the Interparliamentary Committee. What remains to be done is to form a unified government to lead the country to elections. While we were working on this initiative, parallel initiative has come up to undermine what we were doing. So long as this continues, <laughs> there is no way we can move forward. I feel sorry because the Libyan people deserve better leadership.
Libyan, it's unjust for the Libyan people to be imposed this situation. Since 2011, they have not witnessed the democracy which was promised to them. Moreover, they are undergoing more insecurity, more economic havoc. The Libyans are poorer today than in 2011. That's the reality, the sad reality. And this is why the Council is placed under its own moral responsibility to put an end to this situation by vigorously telling everybody, the national leaders, the so-called national leaders who are in power in Libya today, and their foreign backers to leave the Libyan citizen have the opportunity to chart a new course for their country, for the rebirth of Libya, to rebuild their country, to preserve its uh, territorial integrity, to reshape their political system, the opportunity to create the conditions for prosperity. Libya is the richest country in that region. It has all the resources today to be prosperous, comes stability and peace, and the end of foreign intervention, be it regional or international. This is the situation now. This is the uh, imperative for the Council to act on it. Thank you.